has it done, um, well, you asked the question, how many people has it hurt? Um, and uh, I think you'll get a different answer. Uh, I don't know that that's possible uh, to measure statistically. Uh, I will not tell you that uh, people are not affected by even well-structured uh, race-conscious admissions, but if it's structured properly, they should be impacted by that in the same way they're impacted by any other factor that's taken into account with respect to uh, admissions uh, in pursuit of any other kind of diversity. Uh, if that needs more explaining, I'm glad to do it. Um, uh, but uh, some people think that it's hurt the country, uh, and some people think it's, it's helped the country, that it's helped all of us, and that we're, we're a better nation. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I don't have a better answer than, than that at this moment, uh, though there's a lot more we could say about it. How about you, Sharon? Um, in the 80s, there was a study uh, that looked at the contract compliance program compared to non-contractors and found that there was some improvement in the representation of uh, minorities in con federal contractor um, facilities. Uh, we attempted to do some of that during the Clinton years, and um, we're not able to because of priorities otherwise budgetary and, 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 this, and the like. Um, so there was a look at, at, at uh, the impact of, of, of the executive order program. I might add, though, that again, uh, with respect to the anecdotal data, we do have at least two generations. Uh, and I'm going back to the late 60s, where again, a critical mass of students that looked like me were admitted to the Ivy League and the Seven Sisters. And frankly, we did quite well, thank you. Um, so I think there is certainly some history there that has shown that it has worked. Let me also add, while I have the floor, I do want to take issue a little bit about one thing my colleague, Mr. Shaw, said. In my view, affirmative action means giving somebody who was qualified a chance, an opportunity. Sonia Sotomayor was qualified. I also commended the president when he nominated Condoleezza Rice because, and I'm sure, you know, maybe uh, our second president turned over, third president turned over in his grave when a black woman became secretary of state. She was qualified and she was given an opportunity to be secretary of state. And I commended the president for that. Without regard to race or gender, he gave her a chance. Yeah, well, well I'm not sure. And that's, but I'm, I'm also responding to my colleague Kersino's statement. So I think, I do believe Ms. Sotomayor did benefit from a kind of affirmative action. Okay. Yeah, we don't disagree. Regard. We don't disagree. We haven't, you, you haven't said anything I disagree with. Um, so if I could uh -huh. just say that, um, I have a couple of other comments since I was the only one on the left here for a while <laughs> that I'd like to respond to as as, the, as, as, as there is time, if, if I may sure. judge. A couple quick things. First of all, I don't believe my colleague to my left really wanted to say the President of the United States and the Commander in Chief believed that protecting diversity was more important than protecting lives. Well, I'm, I was just quoting the words okay. that were said, and that is in fact what was said. Well, but I don't believe the President believes that. I, I do not. believe that the issue, and I'm not defending what was said, I do believe that it's understood that the concern was that there not be the backlash, hence we have problems, so, so that we have problems of discrimination against people on the basis of their religion. I think that is a concern uh, of, of many. I'm sure the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission will probably reissue some statement about the effects of discrimination on the basis of religion. So I think that was the concern uh, there. Um, it, the statement was real strong, and I, I just thought I, you know, it sort of got my attention. <laughs> on the issue of disparate impact, once again, there is a lack of a reflection as, as articulated today about the fact that there is another component to disparate impact. One has to prove job relatedness. Or in other words, the employer has to show that it's related. And there's a question of validation. If, 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 if a physical abilities test is job related, then women lose. If it is not, then they win. I mean, there's something inherently fair about saying, well, is it relevant to the job? That's why we had Griggs versus Duke Power. Okay, uh, 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 you know, high school diploma requirement for a, a menial job. Was it job related? And the court said no. So I think we need to talk about the entire 
all the components of disparate impact and not simply uh, one aspect. And lastly, I want to address this whole issue of Gruder and Grutz and all the indignation about race when, in, when clearly Michigan used many factors, and then Ted could wax eloquent about all of those factors, including the one that I always talk about, which is legacies. And I would love to see the, and I don't like using the term left and right because they mean nothing to me, but I would like to see those who oppose race preferences to speak a little bit more loudly about preferences as it relates to being the son or daughter of an alumnus or an alumna or issues such as having lived in the Upper Peninsula or socioeconomic status, which is also a consideration that Michigan used. Athletics, coming from a feeder school, most of those are predominantly white or, or upper, uh, you know, those of students that are better prepared. I just took a colleague of mine's son, my goddaughter's son, to interview at a major school in Boston that our, our, our governor attended, and I can't believe he, the, the, the interviewer actually said, why don't you repeat the ninth grade twice in order to come to this school, without even having seen his academic credentials. I couldn't believe I was seeing that in 2009. Tell me there aren't con continued problems. So I, I want to discuss causation fallacy issues as it relates to Michigan, uh, Gratz and Gruder. I want to talk about all those, those preferences. If we're going to get rid of one, let's get rid of all of them. Okay, so Linda? that's just You're my on. concern. Well, l l let me respond uh, first to your last point, uh, Shirley. Um, I actually have spoken out and spoke out uh, during the debate in the Michigan uh, referendum that uh, outlawed uh, racial and ethnic preferences against legacy preferences. Uh, my father had a ninth grade education. My mother did manage to, to finish high school. So I have no great uh, love affair for people who get preference based on the college that their parents attended. Uh, but I do think that uh, whether or not you think it's good policy, which I do not, uh, to have preferences uh, based on legacy or not. Uh, I think that's a different issue than when you're talking about a state institution, whether or not it's constitutionally permissible to have such, uh, such programs. Uh, by the way, the Center for Equal Opportunity and the various studies that we've done, and as I mentioned, we've done several dozen studies of college admissions programs at, at uh, public colleges and universities around the country, as well as law schools and medical schools, we have looked at the issue of uh, residence and the kind of preferences that are given uh, based on state residence. And we found in those institutions where we've looked at this that the amount of preference given to, uh, for race uh, exponentially uh, outweighs the amount of preference the, that is given on uh, the basis of state or uh, in-state status. And on the issue of uh, preferences for social class, again, this I think is a public policy matter, and uh, I think there might actually be some benefit in taking into account uh, a student's uh, overcoming economic and social disadvantages. Uh, I don't think that that ought to be tied to race or ethnicity. Uh, I think it ought to be tied to uh, income. Uh, but um, when the University of California looked at this issue back uh, right after uh, uh, the proposition was passed, uh, Proposition uh, 209 was passed that outlawed uh, racial preferences, uh, the university decided to abandon giving some uh, advantage on the basis of social class because what they found was that there would be even more Asian students admitted than were already admitted uh, on the basis of uh, their existing program, which actually disadvantaged uh, Asians on the basis of their ethnicity. So I think th these other issues are matters of public policy. Uh, some I favor, some I don't favor. Uh, I think they do not rise to the same constitutional level when you're talking about state schools as the issue of race does. Thank you. Now we, we've got 15 minutes left and probably a lot of questions from the, from the public, so uh, please step up to the mic. Identify yourself, where you're from, and try to keep your questions short and not to make a speech because we've got 15 minutes. And, and ask, and also identify the person to whom you're asking the question. 